Good evening, viewers of Voice of Canada. We are back again with our weekly popular talk show. Uh, your main anchor is Asfandiar Aspi Wadiwala, and our charming co-host is Vanessa Alkurti. Welcome yeah. to our show after uh, remaining absent for two, three weeks. <laughs> uh, we have got a wonderful, wonderful guest today, a very important member of parliament who has been elected recently from the liberal riding of Mississauga Streetsville, which is a very prominent riding and a strong riding, our one and only Richie Valdez. Welcome, Hi. Richie, to our show, Voice of Canada. And we are really lucky to have you this evening with us. And we are going to have a lovely chit chat with you all about your activities as an MP and as also what you did prior to being an MP as, as a community worker. You and, and I've heard a lot. I've done quite a bit of research about you. So keep on doing the good job. And I would like you to first introduce yourself for our two of our viewers. And then we'll proceed with our formal questions. Absolutely. First and foremost, I just want to say congrats again and happy five years to Awaz Entertainment. Thank you. And I was so proud and glad to be part of that special celebration prior to the COVID restrictions. And to the Voice of Canada, Aspie, Vanessa, thank you so much for inviting me and happy new year to those who are tuning in. Um, for those that I haven't gotten a chance to speak with yet, I am Richie Valdez, as uh, they just introduced, MP for Mississauga Streetsville. So prior to entering politics, I worked for 15 years in corporate banking and became a small business creative entrepreneur. And in my spare time, I coached and mentored people. I developed community through basketball, and I really advocated for diversity and inclusion, women, youth, and small businesses. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. As you are a freshly appointed MP at our House of Commons in Ottawa, how do you feel with your recent achievement to represent Mississauga Streetville riding? Well, I feel very blessed and fortunate. And, you know, I want to say thank you to the residents of Mississauga Streetsville who are listening today because it's your support. Um, that really, um, you know, I'm just so grateful that you put your trust in me and you gave me the opportunity to serve the city where I grew up. Um, Streetsville is just a very, Mississauga Streetsville as a whole is just a place where I have so many memories um, from growing up when I moved to Canada. And I'm really excited to represent the families, the different communities, organizations, and really to be the voice and advocates for your, for yourself. And I believe, I believe, Asfi, you're also within my constituency. I'm your constituent. Yeah. I'm lucky that I'm taking my my MPs interview so soon after elections. <laughs> I'm a lucky guy. <laughs> people, lots of people would be envying me. Okay, how you got hold of Richie? So I before I start another question, I would like to say salamat. Welcome to our show. That's amazing. And keep, keep doing the great work. Uh, we, uh, we keep, uh, Richie, tell us. As you belong to our Mississauga streets, will riding, and are you aware? Will you, you do you know the demographics of our riding? I do. Yes, there is a yes. I do know the demographics. I remember when I first looked into it. Uh, it's a staggering fifty percent are definitely Caucasian, and then there's, yeah. it actually gets bro broken down uh, to the various different communities thereafter. Thank you. Go ahead. And um, what's your life before entering politics and const uh, constanting federal election in 2021? Were you involved in any community service? Uh, yeah. So um, prior, I think I briefly mentioned mentioned it, but prior to politics, I was heavily involved in developing community. Um, I'm really fond of creating spaces for women small business entrepreneurs, global entrepreneurs, you know, to get together and learn from one another. And I focused on mental health, wellness, and business upskilling to assist those who need it. Um, the, the best thing that anyone can do is to really share information with each other and meet and greet each other, because that's how you truly support uh, one another. And I managed a not-for-profit organization that advocated for men's, women's, and youth basketball. And um, we definitely raised a lot of funds for good causes. 
I really participated in diversity and inclusion councils. I'm a big advocate for community and volunteerism and really helping those in need, especially like I have a soft spot for newcomers to Canada, being that I myself immigrated here back in 1989. Wow. Um, yeah. So, you know, any way I can give back, I think that's what it's all about. And that's where my heart has always been. And speaking of the community, if there are any women listening to the call from my writing, I invite you to join Good Vibes with me, Richie Valdez, for my Women's Council because it kicks off on Monday. And really, it's really meant to engage, educate, and empower women. So it kicks off on Monday. <laughs> MP Richie Valdez, as you have been elected as a member of parliament, honorable member of parliament, and as you've got a, a chance to move a private member bill, do, have you thought about it? If you are given a chance, what, what major uh, bill you will be moving in the House of Commons? I've spent the past three months like really listening to the needs of the residents, organizations, and communities. And those conversations will assist me in putting forward a private member's bill in the future uh -huh. when that time comes. And I want to be able to put something forward that has the most positive impact on the community. Definitely. Definitely. Go ahead. Have you identified any major issues with constitution are facing in Mississauga Streetville? And what are these issues? And... Will you soon address them? Yes. So the first thing that I really, really want to do is really help us get through this pandemic. I mean, all of us are, you know, we're experiencing some challenges and I really want to help assist in addressing them. Um, and so other than that, addressing issues like immigration, that has been a huge topic since the tape, since I went door knocking Definitely. from before. Immigration, housing affordability, child care, and taking care of our seniors. I can say, and I'm so happy because uh, myself and the other local MPs have already been strongly advocating for these in Parliament, and I will continue to do that. As mentioned, inclusion for women and equality for all. Um, and really addressing issues like the additional ones, which are just as big, which is fighting climate change, affordability in general, cost of limit living discrimination, because we face it, um, and mental health issues as well. MP Welders, will you inform our viewers what were the major bills were discussed or were, or were under reading uh, during your before prior to winter holidays? So people Several. would really like to know okay, what bills were you had addressed and what are in pipeline. Sure. So since November 22nd, it was a very productive session. I am proud to say that conversion therapy is now illegal in Canada, and that was passed unanimous, unanimously in the House of Commons. And right away, our government proactively got to work to put forward a bill to further protect Canadians. And that is why we're in this place now. These new regulations enacted by Bill C-2 expanded the local lockdown program and the Canada worker lockdown benefit as well. And that ensures that in areas with new capacity restrictions, like he, even here in Ontario, workers and businesses are covered by the federal support measures. We also were able to put in place 10 paid days of sick leave now officially, and that's law for federally regulated sectors. And Canadians should not have to like choose between going to work sick or paying their bills. And finally, um, what we really advocated for was uh, protecting healthcare workers. You might have heard this in the news, but we wanted to ensure that whether you're a healthcare worker or patient, that you wouldn't have to worry about, you know, your 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 health and your safety. So it's now illegal in Canada to block access to healthcare sites or intimidate healthcare workers. So, I mean, that's all that's all we did as well. Like since November 22nd, so we've been very productive. And I'm really excited to get back to work as soon as we, uh, as soon as the break completes. So it's uh, the House of Commons is opening for on 31st of January. Am I right? That is correct. You'll be resuming there. Uh, it will be virtual or in person at the house. Um, at this time, uh, because of the situation, we are prepared to either go back or virtual, but my gut's telling me that it will be virtual at this time. Virtual at this time, okay. Due to Omicron closure in the federal government announcing a financial relief package for Canadians who had lost their income due to this third unexpected closure of, 
of so many businesses like SERB or so people can apply for SERB again? Yeah, so our government, as I mentioned earlier, we got to work right away uh, in December and we're able to put in place these support measures to really assist Canadians during this time. So we have extended three programs, the Canada's Worker Benefit, the Canada's Recovery Sickness Benefit, the Canada's Recovery Caregiving Benefit. And without going through the details, what I can do is I can certainly share the link so that you can send it to our viewers who can then look Definitely. into it further through the website. But these benefits really will assist with you, um, especially during this time. And I'm also pleased to announce, uh, because I had a lot of uh, constituents talking to me about uh, their feedback on the Canada Emergency Business Account. So I'm pleased to say that just yesterday, our government announced the repayment deadline for the SIBA loans uh, to qualify for partial loan forgiveness is being extended from December 31st, 2022 to December 31st, 2023 for all eligible borrowers in good standing. So really this extension will support the short-term economic recovery and offer greater repayment flexibility to small business businesses and not-for-profit organizations who are facing challenges during this time. Thank you, Richie, for giving us uh, such a detailed answer. Our viewers will be really happy. Do send us uh, the links. And once when we release within few week, uh, two weeks' time your interview, we would be putting those links also for the information of our constituents and Canadians. Perfect. Uh, MP Richie, uh, as you are aware that since March 2020, our country, not only Canada, but around the world, this pandemic has caused uh, havoc. And now... We are also, Canada is also facing lots of uh, bad debts, inflation, and lots of uh, other issues, you know, unemployment and all. So has, is the federal government taking any concrete measures to reduce inflation? So I can help, help answer that. Thank you for that great question. So just so everyone is aware, on mid-December, the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, Christian Freeland, and the Governor of the Bank of Canada announced the renewal of the Bank of Canada's inflation target for another five-year period. Wow. And it's about keeping life affordable for all Canadians. And the Government of Canada and Bank of Canada announced that we will renew the 2% inflation target for another five-year period. The target will continue to be the midpoint for that 1% to 3% inflation control range. And that's really, that renewed framework will keep the bank focused on delivering low, stable, and predictable inflation in Canada, which we need. And we maintain the stable environment for prices Canadians pay. And that's really important, uh, you know, for Canada's monetary policy. Uh, we will be taking a short break and we'll be back with you soon. Thank you. It's good to dream big, to own a house and a business, get residential and business loans, get insurance to protect your dreams, Get your children in university education without monetary worries. Invite your family from back home to share your success in Canada. Me and my team of professionals will help you under one roof to settle down in Canada. Amber Financial and Allied Services, call now. 647-887-1696. Amber Financial and Allied Services, all services under one roof. So. Now it's fully renovated. Life catering, barbecue, tandoor, jalebi, or fresh naan. Takhreeb aapke ghar mein ho ya ghar se bahar. Zok is providing full service now. And Zok has opened a new banquet hall, garden, even center. Aapka Zok take lo kehenge. Kya Zok hai aapka? Call right now 905-625-7786. Zok. Zok walon ke liye. How are you doing, Mira? Good. Good job. Honey, where's the masala for the chicken biryani? In front of you. And for the veg biryani? <laughs> You're holding it. Tea masala. Good boy. 
डिक्सी इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स और अप्लायसेस पिछले 16 सालों से खरीदारों की खिदमत कर रहे हैं हम लगातार चार सालों से खरीदारों की पहली पसंद बने रहने का अवार्ड हासिल कर चुके हैं हम किचन बॉश वर्लपुल एल जी सैमसंग और जनरल इलेक्ट्रिक के ऑथोराइज डीलर हैं। फाइव स्टार खिदमत का लुत्फ ले हम आप सभी को सीवी सबसे ज्यादा रियायती दामों पर देने की गारंटी देते हैं www.dixieelectronics.ca हमारी वेबसाइट पर जाएं या अभी कॉल करें 9056255900 सभी बहुत ही मुनासिब कीमत पर दस्तियाब हैं जो आप बा आसानी से ले सकते हैं एट डिक्सी वी सेल क्वालिटी एंड डिलीवर कॉन्फिडेंस अगर आप चाहते हैं खूबसूरत विजिटिंग कार्ड साइन बोर्ड बिल बोर्ड तो कॉल कीजिए अमनदीप सिंह को फोर वन सिक्स फाइव सेवन सेवन फाइव वन टू एट फोर वन सिक्स डिजिटल साइन कॉर्पोरेट इवेंट्स हो या शादी की तकलीफ बर्थडे एनिवर्सरीज हो या हो बेबी शावर और अगर आप चाहते हैं स्टूडियो सेटअप रेंटल बैकड्रॉप हार गजरे या पार्टीज के लिए फ्रेश फ्लावर अरेंजमेंट दैन कॉल आफिया खान एट फोर वन सिक्स सिक्स टू एट सेवन एट फोर नाइन एस एस इवन डेको क्रिएटिव एलिगेंट एम यूनिक एंगेज इन सी सी टी वी सिक्योरिटी कैमराज डोर बेल वीडियो एंड अलार्म सिस्टम इंस्टॉलेशन सिंस लास्ट ट्वेंटी ईयर्स इन ट्रारो सेटिफाइड टीम ऑफ प्रोफेशनल सर्विंग ऑन थेरियो कम्पलीटेड मेनी रेसिडेंशियल एंड कमर्शियल प्रोजेक्ट सक्सेसफुली हाई रैंकिंग रिव्यूज ऑन गूगल बेटर बिजनेस ब्यूरो एंड होम स्टार्स हंड्रेड परसेंट सेटिस्फेक्शन गारंटी फॉर फ्री एस्टिमेट कॉल फिर खान एट सिक्स फोर सेवन फाइव जीरो फोर एट थ्री टू फाइव और विजिट एशियन टेक्नोलॉजी गेट वे ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन कम बैक फ्रॉम आवर शॉर्ट ब्रेक सो वे कैन स्टार्ट विद क्वेश्चन and my question is going to be that we congratulating our prime minister of canada justin trudeau who won again the minority government for the second time so do you see any difficulties being faced by your government to complete the second term of the office the minority government there is always the risk of having challenges right but we do hope that the opposite parties will continue to work with us and in good faith continue to work on legislation that will help canadians at the end of the day definitely because we cannot afford of a non elections and re elections it costs a huge money and at the same time the current government who is working so hard with vigorously really spoils the show so we must allow our present minority government to complete its term that is my yes. appeal to all our canadians as a canadian commu- uh, community leader uh, mp richard can you emphasize uh, some more about the vaccines procurement uh, of our government though we just heard prime minister justin honorable justin trudeau that he says he has made arrangements with pfizer and moderna till 2024 so now uh, the vaccines will be becoming the part of our canadian life we already have taken about three vaccine uh, three shots two two vaccines and one booster shot so uh, when do you think we will be getting the fourth one after 3 months yeah, well um before i answer that question i first really want to take a moment and say thank you to canadians because you know we have done our part thank you for doing your part getting those vaccinations and particularly those additional boosters and if you haven't already it isn't too late to get your vaccines and boosters and stay protected against covid and its variants Definitely. and i really want to say a shout out to all those individuals who work together to protect everyone's safety and well-being like it's a big team effort you have vaccine transport team nurses doctors volunteers and all the individuals that really administer them we all work together as canadians to get where we are today and i'm really proud of the federal government for really stepping up and procuring enough vaccines and boosters for everybody um so to answer your question um we'll just rely on our health officials to be able to announce if and when there may be a time that we'll need additional boosters but really at this time it's really important to get that third booster or your vaccines if you haven't already Good. Our original appeal is also finding shortage in the long-term care in federal government, providing any help hand to our province to overcome this matter as well. 
Yes. So that's a great question. Um, now, despite the long-term care falling under the provincial and territorial dis- jurisdiction, our government has been committed to ensuring that all seniors across Canada receive that quality care they deserve by continuously working with our partners. So that is why, in addition to the annual $40 billion health care budget allocation that are provided to the provinces and territories through the Canada Health Transfer, a further $3 billion will be invested by Health Canada to specific areas that address national standards to affect permanent change in the long-term health care sector across the country. And I really want to recognize the importance of supporting seniors at home, which is why we propose to introduce a new age, a new well initiative as well. As you know, the ongoing pandemic has been incredibly isolating for many elderly individuals who had previously relied on their own network of friends and family to support. So this program would really address this issue by matching low income and vulnerable seniors with volunteers through community based organizations to help them assist them with anything that they, they, need, they may need with their day to day lives. MP Valdez, you must have heard the good news that Mississauga will soon be having the largest hospital in in our city of Mississauga, which was an overdue demand of our Mississauga residents because our healthcare and the hospital beds were always short and people were facing. We are really proud. Is federal government also taking part uh, in this uh, construction and building up of a new hospital? Well, at this time, the federal government, as I've talked about already, is truly focused on getting us through the pandemic. And time will tell whether we will be have well, well, whether we will have involvement in the development of that new hospital. And I want to give a particular shout out to the nurses who, and doctors, you know, who will be particularly happy once that uh, hospital is upgraded, because it will certainly assist us in the future. Definitely. And we are all looking forward to it should come up soon because as you are aware that Vaughan already has a lovely, beautiful hospital tower in the city. So Mississauga should not lag behind. Yeah. No. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, so due to increase in our demographics in Toronto, gun violence is increasing and target killing of people has become normal every day now in federal government. Uh, the, uh, taking any concrete measure to bearing strict laws on gun violence and assisting to our province? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. This continues to come up, but our government made promises to Canadians to further strengthen it. And we passed legislation to strengthen background checks, which will better support law enforcement by really increasing record collection and license verification for those buying guns. And in 2020, we pro- we actually prohibited those firearms that were designed to be used by soldiers. So we pro- prohibited the use of those. And we will reintroduce the legislation to target criminal activity and address intimate partner violence. And then we're going to also introduce tough restrictions on handguns and prohibit military-style assault rifles, which are very dangerous. And we remain committed to taking action necessary to keep our communities safe. And we will work with the province and specific municipalities that are seeing the rise in gun violence. And we'll work with local uh, police to understand what their needs are and how the federal government can continue to support them. MP Valdez, you are aware of also that the housing is causing a biggest problem since last few years here in all the cities of GTHA. The first time buyer is not able to even think of buying a house because the cost has gone so high in all these cities. So is the government trying to do something to get the prices under control or bring some law, some policy so everybody can at least afford to buy a house first time easily. Absolutely. Minister Ahmed Hussain and his team have been relentless in supporting Canadians and we def- they definitely have the backs of Canadians. So what, I'll, what I'm going to do is because housing is such a hot topic, I'm going to answer your questions separately. Yeah. The first is really kind of talking about 
We know that housing market affordability. And then I'm going to talk about first time home buyers separately because I feel like they're two really kind of separate things. Yeah. Um, so first around housing market and affordability, we believe that every Canadian deserves a safe and affordable place to call home. Oh. And since 2015, we have invested $27.4 billion for affordable housing and brought in Canada's first ever national housing strategy. And I want everyone to know, like for those in Mississauga, in Peel alone, the federal government provided $276.4 million through the National Housing Strategy and the National Housing Co-Investment Fund. So again, we remain committed to tackling that crucial issue of housing affordability. And within the throne speech, if you had a chance to listen to it, we outlined numerous initiatives to increase housing supply to support Canadians. So that's a $4 billion investment in a housing accelerator fund to speed up the construction because we know that the constru if we need homes, we do need to speed that up. A flexible first-time home buyers incentive and also a rent-to-own program to help renters become homeowners. Now, I realize I said a lot, but that's just really speaking to affordability. And then if we talk about, you know, the first time home buyers incentive, I mean, I remember the time, the first time I bought my home and how challenging that was. Mm -hmm. So I can only imagine what uh, the next generation is dealing with today. So to help first time home buyers today, our government has introduced Canada's first ever national housing strategy because we want Canadians to find a safe and affordable place to call home. And part of that strategy, we introduced the first time home buyer incentive, which will help families achieve the dream home ownership of lowering their monthly mortgage payments without increasing those down payments that are required. And we're expanding the incentive to enhance eligibility in Toronto, um, Vancouver and Victoria by re by expanding the incentive of uh, their sorry, they're qualifying threshold to one hundred and fifty thousand. And again, what I'll do is I realize I am giving you a lot of information. I'm really happy to provide the links so that folks can make sure they can go and just read more upon what I'm talking about already. Definitely. Thank you. We must introduce also some low cost housing schemes initiated by the federal at the same time, the provincial government should be involved. So this matter Absolutely. can be solved to a certain extent. Yeah, and, and I'm yeah, I'm, I totally agree with you 100%. MP Valdez, we would also like to now touch our great province of Quebec, which is a French secular province, and and they are they are also part and parcel of our federation. Uh, uh, the Bill 21, which has become a law since June of 2019, am I right? Uh, is affecting few major community visible communities with this law. And whenever we have uh, spoken or asked the Quebec politicians, they say we have got nothing against any community or any Canadians. We are a secular province. But basically, Canada itself is a secular. secular. Sec Canada doesn't have any state religion. Am I right? Yeah, well, anything related to Bill number 21, I can certainly, uh, those are really great questions. And I just want to be clear. So our position is really important, which is that nobody in Canada should ever lose their job because of what they wear or yeah. their religious beliefs. And what we're seeing in Chelsea, which is specifically, I believe, what you're referring to, is you have this community coming together to stand up for their neighbor, in this particular case, a teacher. And parents are having a difficult conversation with their kids. So Quebecers are defending their rights through the courts, and that's a key process like in our democracy. And so we're continuing to follow this closely, for sure. Yes, we, I heard the statement of our Honorable Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. He has assured the Canadians that the federal government is looking into it, and we will try to have a dialogue with the Quebecans, the Quebec government. So let's exactly. hope for the best. Okay, nobody yes. is hurt, and an equality law is there for every Canadian. Exactly. Are you planning to take any action, uh, being our federal MP, to help assist the food bank and increase uh, due to COVID-19 unemployment and infl inflation rate has reached to 5% now, I think? 
Um, so that's a great question. So like I support Eden Food Banks as well as the other local food banks within Mississauga. And just so you know, in the holiday, they had their breakfast with Santa and me and my family drove up and completely enjoyed that event. Um, it was just wonderful see, to see the community go out. My team and I collected food for the food bank donations over the holidays. And I want to thank the constituents for being able to drop by and really help us, uh, you know, put some pool together our food for the food bank. And as an advocate, as I said, for community community and volunteerism, I had actually scheduled time to volunteer at the food bank, but um, due to COVID, that was canceled. So in future, as we always talk about, as soon as we're able to safely reopen, it's definitely getting my team and local volunteers to help me give back at the food banks. You're aware that the Eden Food Bank is doing a wonderful job here in Mississauga, and we are a longtime supporter of Eden Food Bank. And once you resume your office, in the normal conditions, we would definitely have a project to collect uh, more food for, for our people who need, need them. Absolutely. Our, um, is our federal government working to bring electric vehicle for us Canadian and the brand of Common Man as a medium-sized Tesla electronic vehicle from USA and costing from 65k to 150k so government uh, should government give be time be suitable to first time buyers for electric cars yeah, that's a great question. I am a really big uh, supporter of electric vehicles. So just as a quick update, so we are making zero emission vehicles more affordable and charging infrastructure more accessible. And since 2015, Canada has made a historic investment of over $1 billion to make electric vehicles more affordable and charging infrastructure more locally accessible. Now, these investments are critical to be built coast to coast because it really creates that network of fast chargers and installed chargers in local areas where Canadians live, work, and play. And we know that these electrical vehicles are the vehicles of the future. So by building that infrastructure to support that future, it'll ensure that it won't be a burden to the average Canadians once we get down that path. So the federal government and the provincial government should also give some subsidies so everybody can easily afford an electrical vehicle. Because, as you are aware, the gas prices here in the city is 1.45 today, which is not affordable by many common person people. And gas is a major necessity for our daily lives. So it is causing a lot of uh, big holes in our pockets. So is the federal government doing something to get to a point to freeze gas prices? I know it's an international pricing is matched. But at the same time, if the government, federal government takes some strong initiative, they can tell the retailers that beyond this point, they cannot increase the rates of gas. Right. That's a valid question, given, you know, a lot of Canadians rely on it. So Canada has a market-based approach to energy prices, including gasoline and diesel. And our market-based policies help to ensure that sufficient supplies are available at the most competitive price. Now, the price we pay in Canada for energy and petroleum products is determined largely by supply and demand and includes a variety of other factors like transportation costs and local market conditions. And our government is committed to working with the provinces and territories to ensure secure, reliable, and affordable supply of energy for all Canadians. The government of Canada has no jurisdiction over the regulation of petroleum true. Produ Very true. product pricing. However, we will work with the provinces and territories for sure. Keep a, a strong eye on it that the prices don't go beyond a level which people cannot afford. At the same time, I would like to add, uh, as regards gas only, that Canada has got the very huge reserves of uh, crude oil. If we have the facilities of uh, refining, our refineries are just refining 33% as per statistics. Why can't we increase the production, our local production, than getting imported from Middle East? Right. And those are really valid input puts. And I highly encourage you can you can share that input with the provincial. With yeah, we, provincial are, we are already group. doing it and we are okay. pushing them that our refineries should work still more. 33 percent is nothing. If they can refine more gas, it will be helpful to the local market for the domestic market. Right. That's really good feedback. Um, is our federal government planning any financial relief to our seniors 
or our veterans because they each month is passing, they are facing a tons of uh, financial problems and uh, health issues. Sure. And like, these are two very important things that you just asked. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to, again, like, I really want to give um, an answer for one for seniors and one for veterans. Veterans, yeah. Um, so first for seniors, like our government is really, you know, it's continuing to approve the financial security of Canadians in retirement after a long time. Our seniors have provided a long time, a lifetime of service to us. And so based on the new budget, we will be permanently increasing old age security by 10% for seniors age 75 plus in July of 2022 of this year. And, you know, since 2015, our Liberal government restored the old age security to 65, increased guaranteed income supplements for single seniors, and strengthened Canada's pension plan for future retirees, which was mirrored by the Quebec pension plan. I really just want to emphasize that. And as for veterans, um, I'm proud to say that I was assigned to the Standing Committee for Veterans Affairs. Awesome. Congratulations. And, and thank Congratulations. you so much. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm really excited because within Mississauga Streetsville, as you know, we do have our Legion, Branch 139 there. So really being able to advocate for their specific voices is really important. And so the well-being of our veterans has been our number one priority since the start of the pandemic. And Veterans Affairs has been regularly reaching out to at-risk veterans to ensure that they have the support that they need, particularly during this difficult time. And since the big beginning of the pandemic, it has been a priority for our government to ensure veterans and organizations like our Legion Branch 139 are able to continue the work that they do for veterans and families. MP, MP Welders, you are aware that there is a very heavy backlog for immigration and the applications are taking eight to 10 years. But recently due to uprising in Afghanistan, we have accepted huge number of Afghan refugees. So that is, I hope that is not going to affect those applications who are in the pipeline and the people who are really eager to come to Canada uh, are, are again pushed back. So will you see to it at the federal level that the immigration process does not stop for the applications which are due to be accepted. Yes, they're they're working really, really hard. So global migration has been, as you know, appended by the pandemic from travel restrictions to constraints on our settlement partners to employees working remotely. That has, you know, really had a significant impact on Canada's immigration system. But our government acted quickly and decisively and has come a long way since the onset of the pandemic and has provided additional resources where they are needed the most, streamlining our processes and ramping up systems back up. And one of the first things we did was implement priority processing for those who needed it, like vulnerable people, families, meet, you know, family members seeking to reunite with others, and you know, these essential services. And we've improved our technology and digitized more of the operations. So now that's really significantly reduced the amount of time it takes to process applications for permanent residents in comparison to before the pandemic. And so we as a country, we're in a world like and we actually I'm not sure if you guys know this, but we're the first in the world to offer virtual citizenship and citizen citizenship testing online. Wow. So oh, we're the first. Very good. It is. That is an added um, info for our viewers and for Canadians. Yeah, we're the first. And our plan is working. So I'm happy to say that in October, we welcome 46,318 new permanent residents, wow. which is which is the most in ever a single month. And so we really accomplished our goal of accepting 401,000 new permanent residents this year in 2021. So to answer your questions, despite the challenges with the pandemic, despite all the, you know, the things that have happened, we were able to accomplish our goal still of accepting the number of permanent residents in 2021. MP Valdez, due to paucity of time, uh, we would be concluding our this evening's interview with you. And we really look forward to soon once this COVID or uh, Omicron virus is over, we can have you in our office. And at the same time, inform our viewers that the, when, how fast are you going to shift into your constituency office so our people of our constituent, Mr. Saga Streets, will, can approach you, approach your team. And then during weekends, if they want to see you and discuss the issues, they can come over and you can look into it as their MP. 
For sure. So uh, I actually have been good to go since September. So my office is located right on the corner, the southeast corner of Mississauga Road and Dairy Road. Um, we've been open for business. And even though it's a pandemic and remote, we're work, working remotely, we are, you know, uh, responding to emails. Awesome. We're we're returning voicemails, and if uh, anyone want, has any questions, they can certainly reach out by email. Um, it's very easy to reach us. All my information is off my parliamentary website. It's very easy to look up, and also I can share with you as well, um, including our email address. Yes, do and share I all the information and the links as you have promised, and we will be putting up and showing to our viewers with your interview that these are the links and that would be really, really useful. So MP uh, uh, Richie Valdez, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts on behalf of my co-host, so Vanessa Al-Kurti, <laughs> myself, Aswadhyaya or Wadiwala. We'll be saying goodbye and we'll be in touch because I'm your constituent and I'm mm -hmm. a community worker. I'm, I'm going to be often, you'll be seeing me. Thank you, Awaz Entertainment, Voice of Canada. Oh, and and Awaz you. TV, you're always welcome. Whenever you feel like coming, just send us, pick up a phone and tell us you want to come and talk to us and you are most welcome. So stay Perfect. well, stay, stay blessed. God bless you, Thank you. and, and salamat. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Adios. Thank you. Bye. Bye.